Five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Set off. Vehicle is pitching down range. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40 and throttled down to prepare for max Q, which is coming up at T plus one minute. Power and telemetry nominal. One minute and about 12 seconds. Max Q is the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. That's the largest structural load that the vehicle will see on ascent. We throttle down those engines just to pass through max Q and then we'll throttle them back up once we pass through that period. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Maximum dynamic pressure. And great news. We have passed through max Q. You're getting some excellent views there on your screen. Next up, we have a few events happening back to back. That will be Miko stage separation and SES-1. Miko is main engine cutoff, and that's where we'll shut down all nine of the M1D engines to slow the vehicle down in preparation for its next event, which is- MVAC chill has started. Stage separation. And that's where the first stage separates from the second stage. Right after stage separation, the first stage will begin its journey back to Earth for landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. And during that time, stage two will continue on its journey with that third event, SES-1 or second stage engine start one. And that is where the single Merlin vacuum engine will light up and propel the second stage along with ESA's Euclid spacecraft to orbit. In addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate less than a minute after SES-1, so keep an eye out for all of those events coming up here in just about 15 seconds or so. Again, coming up, we have MECO stage separation and SES-1. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Some really cool views of Miko stage separation, and on your right-hand screen, you can see that the MVAC engine has ignited. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. On your left-hand screen, the grid fins on the first stage are deploying, and in about 15 seconds or so, we should have fairing separation. And a very cool view from the ground. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see on your right-hand screen that the fairing halves have deployed. Now, as I mentioned previously, both fairing halves are brand new and are now making their way back down to Earth and will be recovered by our recovery vessel, Doug, today. It is T plus four minutes into today's mission. And in order to complete today's landing, the first stage has two more burns left. Next up is the entry burn, and that's where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, that entry burn is coming up in about a couple minutes from now, and that entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. And what you're looking at on your screen, on your left-hand side, is a view from the first stage vehicle, currently making its way back down to Earth, which you can see in the background, and on your right-hand screen is a view from the second stage looking aft at our MVAC engine. 
acquisition of signal for me to That entry burn is coming up here. Just about a minute and a half. Both vehicles now. continue to follow nominal trajectories. And good callouts there. On the bottom of your screen, you can see the speed and altitude of each vehicle as well. And on your left-hand screen, you can see two of the four hypersonic grid fins that the first stage has. Those grid fins help guide the vehicle as it makes its way back to its landing zone. Again, today we are scheduled to land on a shortfall of Gravitas, currently in the Atlantic Ocean, waiting for the first stage vehicle. And on your screen, you're getting a great view from the second stage with the MVAC there and the Earth looking amazing in the background. We're just about 20 seconds away from the entry burn on the first stage vehicle. You may see some white puffs on that first stage. That is a nitrogen gas puffs for attitude control. Stage one FTS has saved. And there you can see the engines have reignited on the first stage on your left hand screen. This is the entry burn with three of nine M1D engines reignited. And you can see that those engines have shut down. That concludes the entry burn for the first stage. Now we do have one more burn for the first stage vehicle as it attempts to land on our drone ship and that is the landing burn. It will just be a single engine, the center E9 engine reigniting and that is enough thrust to help slow down the vehicle to enable it to touch down on our drone ship. Now during the first stage landing burn, uh, excuse me, the vehicle will be landing for its second time. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage two, terminal guidance. Vehicle will be landing for its second time today. And just before the landing burn begins, we will also have SECO one on the second stage. That is second engine cutoff one. That's where we'll shut down that MVAC engine on the second stage. This is the first of two burns for this mission. And that is coming up here in just a few seconds, followed by the landing burn about 20 seconds after that. There you can see that the MVAC engine has shut down and the landing burn has begun on the first stage vehicle. Expect a loss of signal, Kate. Nominal orbit insertion. What an incredible clear view of Falcon 9 touching down on a shortfall of Gravitas. This landing marks the second successful landing for this particular booster and marks our 204th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stages. We also heard the call out for SECO 1 and confirmation of good orbit. So with confirmation of a successful second engine cutoff and first stage landing, we are going to be in a coast phase until just before the second relight of our MVAC engine on the second stage, which will be followed by payload deploy. So sit tight and we'll see you back here around the T plus 17 minute mark.